welcome to the old Ultra Runner channel. I'm your host Jay Tyner and today I wanted to talk about how to transition to low drop or zero drop shoes. First question I'm sure a lot of you have is why should I even consider the change? Well, if you're having no injury problems at all, I would say don't. <laughs> if, if it's not broke, don't fix it. Um, I considered it several years ago because I kept having injuries. I'd have pain in my knees, I'd have pain in my calves, uh, I, I would often get, uh, I had an injury down in my Achilles tendon that would keep flaring up. I worked on, uh, I went and got orthotics and it helped some. Uh, I got to where I was able to sometimes complete a marathon training cycle, sometimes I would get injured uh, and the injuries would flare up. I started looking I mean, I started, I ran my first marathon in 1993, but by the late 1990s, I was starting to really have some issues. Uh, I had a podiatrist that tweaked my orthotic prescription in 2003, and I was able to start completing some marathons, but it was still always kind of a hit or miss whether I would make it through a full training cycle without getting injured. I started looking in 2007 and 2008, I started hearing about uh, methods that would have you forefoot or midfoot strike. Uh, there was the pose method by Dr. Nicholas Romanoff, and I started having some interest. I watched some of the, I didn't buy their full video thing. I watched some of their information on the internet. Uh, I had a little trouble understanding the cues, to be quite honest. And uh, so I never really bought into that system or, or purchased the whole system. Now, perhaps if I'd have bought it, I would have, uh, gotten it down. I also, about that time, uh, Dr. I mean, Danny Dwyer came out with, he was a ultra runner, he came out with the Chi method of running. Uh, that one, it, it resounded with me a little bit more. You, It talked about standing up straight and then leaning forward from your ankle and then kind of falling forward and catching yourself and, and it was a way to get yourself up on your uh, forefoot or your midfoot and not to overstride. It was all about hitting underneath your body, which which both methods did that, both the pose method and the cheat running method. In uh, 2009, I guess it was, the Born to Run book came out and that also talked a lot about the natural way of running and running barefoot and running uh, learning to run barefoot and learning to the way the Tara Mahar, Tara Mahar, Tara Mara Indians run uh, and how a more natural way of running and it, it, it encouraged a lot of people to get out of the high stack shoes and into lower drop. That kind of started a boom in low drop shoes. Uh, a bunch of companies started selling low drop shoes, zero drop shoes and I decided it was time to make the attempt to switch. So that's the reason I made the transition. I will say that today there are two main schools of thought with how to transition to a zero drop shoe. If, if you go cold turkey from most of us have run in like 12 millimeter drop or 10 millimeter drop shoes. And even when we walk around um, and we wear dress shoes, you have a heel and you're up off the ground, you'll have a, a 10 to 12 millimeter drop. And we've been doing that most of us for most of our lives. And when you have a higher heel drop, I mean a higher uh, heel than is in the forefoot, you're, you're kind of at a ramp. And what that causes is your Achilles tendon back here gets shortened because it's, it's always in a shortened position. So if you go too quickly to a zero drop a flat shoe, it puts stress on that Achilles tendon. It'll put stress all in the back of your, uh, the back of your calf back here as you're, you're going to that. So you need to transition slowly. Uh, I also, another reason I made the change is part of the problem with, with uh, a heel strike, most of us that heel strike heavily, and what I was doing too, my little stick person here to give a example. When you, when you heel strike, you tended to, I tended to overstride, and my leg would be out front. And when you hit on your heel, the, the force just goes straight up your leg. So you feel more pressure in your ankle, up through your calf, up in your knee, and even up into your hip. 
Whereas if you, when you forefoot or midfoot strike, you tend to have your knee more bent and you hit more under, under your body or up and down like this. This allows the ankle to flex. It allows the Achilles tendon to take some of, work as a shock absorber and your knee is able to work as a shock absorber and you get a lot less pressure up into your body. At least that's the theory and, and that's what I have found because since I've made my transition to a uh, minimal, sh to a low drop or zero drop shoe and shortened my stride, I have not had repetitive stress injuries like I used to have. I have had a few injuries where I've had falls, but that's that's just something you can't avoid, especially when you run on the trails, like I do quite often. Um, so the two main ideas that are talked about now for making the transition, one is you start off with your 12 millimeter shoe, run your miles, and then when you're ready to buy a new pair of shoes, go buy something that has a 10 millimeter drop. Run in those shoes until until you're ready to retire them, then buy some shoes that have an eight millimeter drop. Run until you're ready to retire those, then go to a six millimeter drop, and then a four millimeter drop, and then you might go to a zero. But, so it's just gradual, it's, it's very slow, and you work your way through your shoes. Um, and then there are people that also recommend, the, the second way that's recommended often is to just go ahead and buy your zero, uh, zero drop shoes. But then you drastically reduce your mileage because if you jump up and you do too many miles too quickly, just in zero drop shoes, uh, you, you tend to put too much stress, like I said, on that Achilles and the, the soleus in the back of your leg because your leg is not used to being uh, flexed like that and, and getting quite that much, I mean, being straight fully out like that. Um, it's used to being short when you have the drop. So that's another way to do it. You just drastically reduce your miles and it's going to take a while to build up your length of time to, to be able to run longer miles. Um, I would like to give out a third alternative and it's the way I did it. What I did is it's kind of a combination. Of, well, I guess it's more like the second, but what I would do is um, I actually started first with my higher drop shoes, but I would, uh, I would go out once or twice a week and run 20 to 50 yards barefoot just to get used to the sensation of hitting under my body because if you run barefoot you have to pretty much hit under your body and do forefoot or midfoot because it is way too painful to hit on your heel and to overstride. So that would get me used to the feeling and then I would go out and th at the beginning of every run I would just concentrate on hitting on my forefoot for a quarter mile just a short amount of the run and I would do it for a quarter mile and then I would finish the rest of my run my normal way, going back to heel striking. But then, so I would do that the first week. The second week I did a half mile each run where I would concentrate on hitting in the front. Uh, the third week I did it three quarters of a mile and then finished my run the normal way. Then I did one mile. I worked up by a quarter mile each week and at some point I went ahead and bought a, a low drop shoe in the middle of that. But uh, I got to where I was, probably I got to where I was running two or three miles before I went with a, bought a low drop shoe. And then I would still just run the first, whatever distance I was up to, uh, concentrating on my forefoot. And then I would let myself hit my heel after that. But I started only using that zero drop shoe on runs that weren't a lot longer <laughs> than how far I was going on. So if I, if I was up to running three miles, at the beginning of a run on a four foot run, I might pull out my zero drop or my low drop shoes on a four mile run uh, and go ahead and let myself heel strike in them a little bit. But um, what I found over time is by the time you get to where you're running five miles that way uh, or six miles that way, you're naturally gonna start even when you go beyond that, you're getting more and more used to shortening your stride and striking a little softer. So even though I would heel strike some past my five miles or whatever, it was usually a much lighter heel strike. And I was also not, uh, my form was just improving. I was, my turnover was in, increasing. My, uh, I was hitting more under my body. So the impact stress was less. And uh, there's even times now when I get tired, especially 
I will heel strike. But it's it's a much better form because I'm much more over, under my body. I'm not over striding, and I'm able to get that. Sh even when I heel strike, I'm way under my body, so it's it's I'm still getting some flex in my ankle and my Achilles and up in my knee. So uh, that's the way I transition. Just increasing the amount of time um, a forefoot struck each week and then I was able to do that I was working on transitioning to zero drop and training for a marathon at the same time which most people would say that's not a good idea but it worked okay for me and, and uh, anyway and uh, I hope you found some information that was useful out of this if you like the video please like it or maybe hit the subscribe button if you want to hear some more of the content uh, from my channel. Thank you very much.